Uh, start with isomers. There's a couple different parts uh, of this. So you can have the structural or constitutional isomers. And that's where I just give you an equation. So let's do, would you like to do an example of that? Yes. Yeah, okay. So that would be like C3H7. I think I haven't done one like this yet, CL. I don't believe I've done one like this, so hopefully it'll be new. What you do here, what I would encourage you to do, to calculate the degree of unsaturation. When you calculate the degree of unsaturation, you're always comparing to the equation for uh, a straight chain or branched alkane, which is this. So you always compare to that because that's the most saturated one. When you do that, you say, okay, you compare the carbons. 3 is N. Well, N is 3. This has to be 8. You look back at your original <coughs> molecule. 7, and I told you that halogens can count for a hydrogen, so that's a total of 8. So we have an alkane here. So this tells it it's fully saturated, 0 uh, degrees of unsaturation. That means it's an alkane. There's no ring, there's no double bond, nothing like that. Okay, so uh, we'll start drawing it. There's the propane. And I could put the chlorine here, or I could put the chlorine here. Oh, I think I picked kind of an easy one, because I think I'm done. <laughs> okay, it'll be hot for the miss on uh, Okay, that's it. Uh, shoot, you want me to, it's always hard to know if it's going to be a harder easy. You want me to pick a harder one? Let's just do, let's just do it with one bigger, uh, or two bigger, C5H11Cl. Okay, same thing, it's fully saturated, zero degrees of unsaturation. Let's try this, five. So what I do is always draw the straight chain first. There's the five length straight chain. Here's the four length straight chain with one branch. And then the three. Okay with two branches. Uh, now let's start putting the chlorine on it. Chlorine can go on the end. Chlorine can go one inch. The chlorine can go right in the middle. But I'm not going to keep moving the chlorine over because if I put it in the fourth position, it's the same as the one above. If I put it in the fifth position, it's the same as the top one. So that should be it for the five chain. Now let's go to four chain and put it on the end. I put it in the next one over. Put it on the next one over, and put it on the last one. Okay, so there we go for the four chain. For the three chain, I think there's only one option, put it on one of the ends. Why can't it go in the middle? There's right four bonds there, so I can't put it in the middle. Uh, there's no rings, there's no double bonds in this one, just the chlorine being moved around. Uh, so I think that's it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight total. Yes. Okay. Number three. Mm -hmm. just, uh, yes. Uh -huh. Just to clarify, so we count the CL as NH. So that, that's why it's zero. We count the CL as one H. You're counting as this CL, she's asking, as an H. That's true. Uh, or any halogen. You count it as an H. Yeah. You want it right here. Yeah, that's a great question. Why not? Why can't you put it there? It'd be the same as this one. It'd count the same because these methyls are equivalent. They're identical methyls, so it doesn't matter which one you stick it on. Okay, uh, though that's the structural. You can also have geometric. So let's do a couple, uh, let me show you the geometric stuff. This can come in two categories. Uh, cis and trans, you'll see it on rings and uh, alkenes. Rings and alkenes will have double bond. These are things with one degree of unsaturation. 
Uh, so, uh, if this was one of your structural isomers, you have just drawn a trans. And so, to be fully correct, you must draw the cis as well if I ask you for geometric isomers. Okay. So, uh, rings or double bonds, uh, double bonds can have that. If your answer involves rings, so let's say that was one of your answers, uh, and I wanted the geometric an answers, you need to draw it uh, with that. So these are two methyl groups. This is 1,2-dimethylcyclopentane. Either both methyls are up, so this would be cis, uh, and a second one is one's up and one's down. And this would be trans. So if you're asked for the geometric isomers and you came up with this structure for a structural isomer, you'd have to, you'd have to write it twice. So you'd erase this, because this is now garbage, and replace it with these two. <coughs> Okay. Well, the same with uh, one above. If you draw the trans, you should also draw the cis for the geometrics. Okay, and then finally, to do chirality. <coughs> optical isomers. This, uh, they are both called chiral. They're, uh, and as a pair, they're called enantiomers. So a lot of terms go along with this one. This is where it rotates plane polarized light. Uh, and in OCHEM, we name them right and left-handed. So uh, for example, this one's a little bit of a tricky one. But from up here, if you have this, uh, this trans has an optical isomer. So you'd have to draw that if I asked you for the optical isomers. That would be this, where it's still trans, but it's trans the other way. Okay. Typically, though, uh, the optical isomer question will really come, and I give you a molecule, and you'll tell me if it's R or S. So, would you like to try an example? Okay. Uh, let's. Let's drop, try one that's really ugly looking. How about that? Okay. First, could this be optically active, or is it? Yes, it is. You're looking for a carbon with four different groups, and that carbon's right here. It's got this group, this group, the methyl and the undrawn hydrogen. Let's zoom in on this so you can really see it. So now you want to find out if that's R or S, if you're asked for that. And uh, that's what we're doing in this case. So you uh, do the priority first. Uh, this is four for hydrogen, three for the methyl. See, because you've got a carbon, a carbon, and a carbon, but that methyl group <laughs> this methyl group, that carbon has three hydrogens, whereas this carbon has another carbon on it, so that's bigger, and this carbon has another carbon. So, so far these two are equal. When they're equal, you go to the next point of difference. Compare this carbon and this carbon. Well, this carbon has another carbon on it, and this carbon has another carbon. So now you go to the next point of difference. Compare okay, this one and this one. Well, this carbon has three hydrogens. But this carbon has one, two other carbons. So this has priority. Almost by looking at it, you can tell that this one would have to have the number one priority. This one would be two. 